So here I thought this would be the big story of the week. Check out this sexy kangaroo. Look at him. <laughs> It's a big problem. He's apparently blocking people from a restroom in an Australian national park. <laughs> Look at him. That is a sexy kangaroo. He's like the Burt Reynolds of kangaroos. <laughs> Seriously, that pouch must be made of mirrors because I can see myself in it. <laughs> but then I, I also thought that this would be the story of the week, too. Sunday, 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 get ready to be frenemy. As the creators of Man Scouts present the White House Rumble 2 Sloppy Seconds. It's President Ta -ta -ta Trump versus the scruffy sea cow, the gray skinned goblin, the triple shirted nightmare, Steve Bubba -bu Bannon. It's an all out war in the Oval between 45 and the totally disheveled, totally unshaven former chief strategist. It'll be messier than your teenager's bedroom. And the first hundred viewers receive a free temporary job at the White House. So get your act together before the globalists get their grubby hands on this one. It's the White House Rumble 2 Sloppy Seconds! But you know, all of that, it seems like years ago. Trump has this uncanny ability to warp time. Whatever we were talking about on Thursday, it seems like it happened in the 90s. And not, and not the 1990s. The 90s, you know? The new, the new top story is making everyone holier than thou. For him to claim that all the countries of Africa are holes is woefully ignorant. Whole countries. Whole countries. So called whole countries. Whole. It's considered a hole. <laughs> it's like they never swore in their lives, and it's all coming out now. I hope Trump introduces a new vulgarity every week just so they can repeat it over and over again. <laughs> all right. They're applauding that. But it's not like they've ever used that word or intent. If you're in the New York media and you're outraged by that word, you are a hypocrite because you use that word all the time, mainly to describe any gym that doesn't have a juice bar <laughs> or, a, or a pub that doesn't serve craft beer or any place that's beneath your standards of comfort and luxury. Now, Trump denies he worded it this way, but come on. Other men... <laughs> Other men in the room say otherwise, which leads me to conclude, what a bunch of tattletales. <laughs> anyway, I wish he would clean up his act, but come on, the media is treating this word, which is not a deed, like it's Armageddon. A white honky from Norway can come here, but a black dude from Haiti can't. What does that tell you in an America that, one, that, that in one generation called you a we're no different than we were a generation ago, and we're learning the same lessons that we learned when we called a Chinese man a when we called a man from Guatemala a and we called a black man a Did he just say all of that? That's wrong. I think we, I think we need something to calm me down. Now I get it. Trump's rhetoric makes him a heavy lift. You know what he is? He's that two hour drive for 30 minutes at the beach. But when the, when the media turns this in, into this collective dewy eyed drama queen, I start to think the drive, it's worth it. Fact is, we have a president who talks like this and this isn't even the worst thing he's said. <laughs> But I look at it this way. Who would you rather have operate on your kid? A great doctor who's an <laughs> or an incompetent guy who's a charmer? We know what we got. But here's the thing. As long as Trump's actions are good, we'll probably live with a not so good rhetoric. But if things start turning south, then who knows? But so far, so good. Remember this. We want to see something happen with Doc. It's been spoken of for years. Fact is, our country was such a mess, nobody even knows what the numbers are. But we'll know what the numbers are. 
But above all else, any bill we passed must improve jobs, wages, and security for American citizens. The people who elected us, all of us, the people that elected us, we have to take care of them. Now, now Trump did so good that he even drew praise from Trump. My performance, if, you know, some of them called it a performance. I consider it work, but got great reviews by everybody other than two networks who were phenomenal for about two hours. He just graded his own paper and gave himself an A. No, an A's probably not high enough. An A, A, A. And for CNN, it wasn't just a meeting. It was a gosh darn sausage party. <laughs> TV sensation of sausage making. That was great. It is great for people to be able to see the, as Chris calls it, the sausage making spectacle. Before we dig into the dazzling spectacle that we saw yesterday of sausage making. <laughs> that was like three days ago. They were so happy back then. <laughs> sausage. But not everyone was on board. Check out this pair of nuts. This was nothing more than a dog and pony show where he was using Democrats and Republicans to try and show that he was fit, when in truth, he actually showed that he had very little command of the issue. I had some friends that went to Paris over the holiday and they said they were viscerally- Paris, Texas, right? Paris, France. Oh, Paris, France. And they said they were just That's viscerally movie, embarrassed to be Americans. Okay. They said it was, it was the first time that it was sort of chilling. Grandpa kept kind of wandering back and forth and he had to be reminded time and time again by what Republicans he believed. what he believed. I keep trying to figure out how she's able to move that dummy's lips. <laughs> it's gotta be, it's gotta be, it's gotta be. <laughs> that's, how you, that's how you work a dummy. Anyway, no matter what Trump does, they're gonna gripe, but he doesn't help himself with his rhetoric. Still, America rolls along, content as baby leopards. Small business optimism is at an all-time high. Yeah, that works. The economy, <laughs> comedy, the economy is chugging along. Companies are giving bonuses, benefits, and wage increases to their employees. He's coerced North Korea to the table. Iran is bubbling with a secular revolution. Things are, these, all of these things have majority approval across the parties, which kind of strikes me as centrist. So what exactly has Trump done that's pushing us down this slippery slope to a fascist dystopia? Not much, except for crude words. And yeah, he's blunt to the point of ugliness. But I'm sorry, I don't see Joe and Mika taking spa vacations in the Sudan. At least Trump admits that he doesn't. So, t <laughs> so take a tip from this sexy kangaroo. <laughs> Sit back, relax, calm down. Nothing's more attractive than an unflappable marsupial. Right. Let's welcome tonight's guest. He's so tough he shaves with barbed wire. Fox and Friends weekend co-host Pete Hegseth. My iPhone's autocorrect says she's ducking hilarious. Writer and comedian Ali Breen. She's our damsel from Detroit, National Review reporter Cat Tips. Yeah! A satellite dish is his dinner plate. Former bodyguard and my massive sidekick, Tyrus. Yeah! So, Pete, quite a week, huh? <laughs> Just a little bit. Yeah, what's your take on all this, you know? No, I, my take is, is your final take, which is everyone needs to calm down. Mm -hmm. Calm down. No, this president ran on something. He's negotiating it. He used, I don't know, what you call it, salty language. Yes. I, listen, I know what I said when I was walking on patrol in Iraq about the neighborhoods I was walking in. It wasn't, wow, this is a wonderful place. <laughs> was, well, this is a, yeah, you know. <laughs> yes. The reality is you can differentiate the people coming from these places from places that are uh, not doing as well as America, you might say. Mm -hmm. We did have a candidate in the, red, in, the, in the general election that called those who voted for the president deplorable. Is that acceptable? Yeah. So you're deplorable, you're deplorable, you're deplorable. No, I mean, it's, 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 it's a, it's a the, the left loves to point at Americans who they don't like and say they're unacceptable. But when the president points out that a visa lottery system, a lottery system is grabbing from countries that may not be as good as we would want them to be, many of which have radical inclinations, he's, he's somehow racist? It's ridiculous. 
And uh, I think those that support the policies this president is pursuing should not bend to what the left is trying to do to him right well, now. You know, the thing is, though, he's going to have to... He's going to have to be able to make those two things distinct, that he was talking about a country and not people. And he's got to say that by saying, when he moves to merit-based immigration, that it will include people from what we would call the whole countries. That's the only way. Because if he does, if he says, if you're from a whole country and you can't come here, then that's racist. So he has to make sure that he says that, look, these whole countries, there are good people from there. I don't want, I don't want to use the visa lottery system. I want to use a merit-based immigration system so the good people can get in here. But he's got to say that. I hope he says it soon. Ali, first said. time on the show. Yes. Um, talk about whatever you want. What do you think? What do you make of uh, what do you make of this latest controversy? I just, I'm surprised people are so up in arms. We're so used to this locker room talk. That's what got him elected. <laughs> yes, yeah. we love hearing this from him. And I, I like too that people are so obsessed with the rhetoric. Like Hillary Clinton tweeted, you know how abominable it was that he said this, and it was so horrible that he was treating these people this way. The Clinton Foundation stole billions of dollars from Haiti yeah. years ago. I mean, look at actions as opposed to words. I think we need to do more of that. That's the that's the thing is that they're, it's conflating. It's it's uh, now action now de now words are actions. Yeah. And I can see you can argue that if something is inflammatory enough, it can be an action. But I don't know if that's what this is. Cat, um, uh, this country still rolls on. I mean, that's the thing. It goes back to the belief that if. if Trump can handle the big things. We forgive this kind of obnoxious coarse rhetoric. What do you think? Well, now, thanks to Trump, we can say Merry Christmas again. Yes. And we can also say... <laughs> and we can also... We can also say <laughs> hole, apparently. Yeah. You can say Merry hole. You can say whatever you want. Yes. Um, By the way, that, that, that's a book. That is a bar downtown. <laughs> Mary's quite a bartender. <laughs> I... <laughs> Recently, Mary. Yeah. Anyway. So I, what I didn't like about, I didn't like the comments. I didn't like them. I know that yeah. makes me a conservative. <laughs> but I just pictured a little kid being like, hey, mom, can Jimmy come to play? And she says, no. And he says, why? And he says, well, because the country of origin he's from is a <laughs> hole, so he can't come over. Yeah. It's not a good, it's not a a good thing to we say. Run a country. I understand the difference. I completely understand the difference. But basing things based on country of origin and calling it that I think could have done a better job. Oh. I really yeah, I, I think he's going to have to. I think he's going to have to to separate people from country because that's. I would love not, to hear him say that. Yeah, me too. And me too. I hope he does. All right, Tyrus, do you have any theories about this? Oh, first, first, I have two questions. <laughs> two questions for you, Tyrus. <laughs> By the way, Tyrus is his own country of origin. <laughs> <laughs> and it is not. And it's not. It's not. A Properties, beautiful. <laughs> it's not all. I want no two things. I want to ask you, where's Bannon going to go next? Because we were going to talk about Bannon yeah. and also uh, your analysis of Trump. Well, wow, that's a deep question. <laughs> yes. Um, where is Bannon? Yeah. Like we need to get like take Waldo out. Yeah. We were expecting this big fight. It was over in one round. Like, I know. We learned real quick that it was Trump's world, yeah. not Bannon's. He lost everything in a half hour. Yes. <laughs> He lost the show. He lost the radio show. They took his dog, his house. He had to turn his keys in. He's literally... He's literally somewhere in a van down by the river. Yes. And he, he's not handsome like Chris Farley was, so he is scaring the... He's a... Yes. That's where he's at. And my theory with Trump and his tweets... He's drinking. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> From a guy who's had a drink? Yeah. And, I mean, that's the only thing I can think of. You're, the economy is great. Like, we're doing so many great things, and we're talking about this. Or he's in this long meeting, and he's like, and I, as uh, someone from African descent, I, after hearing the statements, I t agree with you that he was talking about the country. So I guess if he said third world country, it would have been better, but third world country, if you look it up in the Urban Dictionary, is yeah. so, <laughs> so I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm going to, yeah. wait, stop, stop sipping the Diet Cokes at three in the morning, whatever it is. <laughs> but remember, he said this.
Yes. Now, he said it in a room, and uh, but I do. I, I think he's just. This is who he is, and it's just like. Well, he has, and he also, his mistake was believing that what he could said in a private meeting would be kept there. Dick Durbin, rather than actually confront him in the meeting and have any courage at all, ran to his friends in the media yeah. afterwards and said, let me tell you what he said, like a tattletale, like you said. Yeah. It's, he's not used to that. That's not how his world operates, but that's how the D.C. swamp of small men operates. Yeah. And from what I understand, uh, Senator Graham handled it. Yeah. So what Graham did? Graham did was like, whoa, hey. Senator Graham he actually him. went and talked to him talked afterwards, to him which is like what you normally do in, yeah. in reality world, but uh, not in this case. I think we learned a lot this week, which we'll soon forget by Monday, <laughs> because we'll be drinking a lot, and Trump will do something else.